Alrighty, so let's continue on with the branches here. And what I'm going to do is show you what I did for the low poly version of the tree. So what we saw in uh, the intro there. And uh, what I'm going to do after that is show you how to then place actual tree cards onto this as well. Um, because then it becomes, you know, more of what we do in, you know, traditional games where you have a little bit more realistic trees. All right, so first things first, uh, what I want to do here is go into the branch here. And I want to do the same thing that we did for uh, the trunk. Uh, I, I want to give it a little bit of noise, but I want it to ignore, you know, the root uh, point there, the first point. So let's go and um, create some random normals first so we're going to use that attribute randomize here okay like so and i'm going to apply that to the normal so n is the attribute and we want negative one negative one negative one for that let's take a look so now we have some random normals very cool all right so uh, then what we want to do is we want to mask it out all right so let's go and drop down an attribute wrangle node here attribute wrangle like so and um, I'm going to use my preset to create the gradient okay but in this case I don't need it to be an attribute I just want it to be a local variable so I'm going to get rid of the at symbol and just declare it as a float that makes it a, a local variable it's local to this node right here and what I want to do is just multiply so at n so we're going to do it times equals to multiply the normal by the gradient like so that makes sure that it is tiny right there or there's no normal there and then the normals get bigger and bigger okay so let's go and drop down the mountain node and there we go so now we can make the the noise a little bit bigger maybe the the offset a little bit less so just add some noise to it you know just a little bit more realism there okay so what we want to do now is just rewire that up. All right, so let's do that. And let's take a look at the final result there. Yeah, so that makes it just feel a little bit better, you know? Cool. All right, so uh, what we want to do now is we want to go and um, create a sphere. Let's create a sphere here. All right, so this is what I did. Uh, for the low poly trees now you can use you know whatever shape that you want I'm just going to show how uh, I use the uh, the sphere here and we're going to go and create a polygon mesh and I'm going to place it on the z-axis and the reason why I'm doing that again is because when we use the copy to points the z-axis is the forward pointing direction all right so I always always keep your stuff you know pointing forward in the z direction and it'll copy to the the points appropriately based off the normal direction Okay, so with that, uh, what we can do uh, right here where we have this polyframe, let's take a look here. Okay, turn on our points and our normals. All right, and what I do want is to have my normals facing in the correct direction. So again, I'm going to drop down that point node like so. Oops, put that into the first input there, and I'm going to switch this over to normal, and we'll just invert the normals. So another way to invert those normals cool now what we want to do is get the last point so I'm going to do a group by range all right we'll call this last point and the group name will be called last PNT for last point and we'll switch it over to a type of points that way we're selecting points and then what I want to do is just move the end slider up one and you'll notice that if we turn off our normals here deselects that but I'm going to invert it so then we get just the last point point. and the reason why I'm doing that is because then I want to blast that point like so all right so we'll come down here and we'll select last point and we'll say delete non-selected and that gives us that point with the normal so with that what we can do is then do a copy to points like so and now we have our sphere attached to the point there and you'll notice that it's pointing in the correct direction it's pointing in the same direction as the, the normal is pointing and that's because we set it in the z-axis all right so let's make it a little bit lower poly here that's going to work out pretty good for us 
like so. You know, at, at this point, you can just go and start to, you know, change the shape of it a little bit. Um, that's what I did. Uh, another thing that we, we can do here is, uh, let me drop down a, a normal node down here, just to give it normals again. All right, so you can do this there, or we can do it here. All right, so if we do it there, um, what I want to do is give it some point normals here, like so. And I'm going to drop down a, a mountain node again. And this is just a quick way to add some noise. All right, you can change the height of that. You can change the noise type. You can go and play around with all the settings. All righty. Cool. So with that, we now have the sphere attached to the end of the actual branch. Up here, we have the, this branch that we were using. So let me actually do this right here, like so. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to go and sweep a circle. So I'm going to create a circle, and this is going to create the geometry for the branch itself. Okay, so I'm going to create a sweep node. And this will be the backbone, and this is our shape, like so. And I always try to keep these guys, you know, organized appropriately. I am running out of space a little bit here. Uh, but I'll clean it up later. There we go. All right, so now we have that swept along the, the curve there. And what we need to do now is I'm going to make a, a circle a little bit smaller, less divisions. We don't need as many geometry or as much geometry for this. And I'm going to turn on the auto closure. So everything's looking good there. Perfect. Uh, but we need, what we need is the, the uh, P scale value. All right, so let's go and do that. So we're going to do an attribute wrangle, like so. And I'm going to use my preset there to get the gradient. And again, I don't need, well, actually, no, I don't need the uh, the attribute it can be a local variable because what we're going to do is we're going to say at p scale is equal to gradient like so and that will create the taper effect but we need to do a one minus and there we go and then we just control the overall scale of that with the actual uniform scale on the circle cool now you can drop down a normal here also if you just want to check out the final geometry um, but what I usually do is just put a normal at the very end, all right? Um, that way, it just takes care of all the normals. But you can still keep that there. Just try to reduce the amount of nodes that I actually have. Okay, so what we need to do now is just merge these two together here, like so. And then pump that into the final. And now we've got our rough-looking tree stuff foliage you know just kind of the rough volume of that tree foliage it's a little big for sure i just go through and i just really i just start messing around with a, a lot of the settings we can change this overall scale here get something that looks kind of cool you know and you can change the type of shape as well uh mess around with the the noise a little bit more maybe we change this to a purlin like that maybe make it just a little bit bigger yeah uh, we can also go and uh, drop down a transform node here and if you go and translate it in the z direction you, you can see you could push it out a little bit more we can pull it in a little bit more right uh, we could rotate it so you get them to all kind of point up a little bit Right, and these are all values that you can go and expose. Cool. So the last thing that we really want to do um, here, yeah, for the low poly version at least, uh, this is the general idea here. I'll let you guys kind of take it from there. Uh, but what we want to do is I want to be able to group uh, just the foliage area. So we'll call this uh, foliage. And then turn that particular thing, that node on there and keep it on primitives and then just enable the base group. That way we can uh, remove it by itself and then process it through some VDBs there. So let's do a group 
for um, the branches. So we'll say branches. All right. And again, just enable it. That way it just groups the whole branch like so. Okay, so when we get to the bottom here, you can see that we have all the branches in there. And what we want to be able to do when we merge this here, so let's also create a group for the trunk. So we'll call this the trunk, like so. There we go. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to do a blast, and I'm going to remove just the foliage over here. So let's get the foliage and do a delete non-selected. Okay, and then I'm going to do a, a VDB from polygons. And this will merge it into that final mesh, like so. And you can see we're getting a cool like spiraling effect that's coming through from our spiral vex. All right, and we can change the voxel size. This is a cool part about it. You can change the voxel size to get more definition or less definition. And that really comes in handy with the, the low poly effect. Okay, so with that, once you've got it set up to where you like it, uh, you can just do a uh, convert VDV. And we'll convert it to polygons. All right. And we can change that ISO value again to get even more of, a, of a, an effect. Let's get some more definition in there. And then I would just want to do a poly reduce. And that's pretty much what I did for that low poly effect. Now, obviously, you can go in there and uh, start to create more detail or you know really fine tune the system. Uh, but this is the overall idea behind the whole uh, low poly tree system. So I'm just going to do something like that. You know, and if you want to equalize uh, the lengths of these edges, you can go down to the equalize lengths. And just move it up a little bit. Though when you're doing the low poly modeling stuff, there's sometimes where you do want the long polygon that catches the light nicely. Okay, so now that we've got all that, uh, let's just do a blast. Let me copy this and we'll say delete non-selected there. And then let's just merge all this stuff together with a VDB. So I'm going to do a VDB from Polygon, same process. And you'll notice that uh, what happens is we don't get the branches in there. And let's take a look why. The, the reason why is because the branches are actually open-ended. They have a hole at the end there. So a quick way to take care of this is to do a polyfill. Just do a polyfill like so and set it to single polygon. And that will cap any open holes and then the VDB will be able to work on it. So we need to actually reduce this down to like 0 0.05, maybe 0 0.01. There we go. So now we're starting to get that back. So we'll say 0 0.005. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. And it'll all be merged into one mesh. Uh, something that I do like to do here is do a VDB smooth. This will just smooth it all out so the transitions will be a lot better. All right, so you can keep doing the iterations there. And we can add more resolution. So if we do 0.2, it'll just give us more. But you'll notice it takes a lot longer to process. So you have to be careful with that stuff. All right, so once you're happy, I'm just going to do a convert VDB. All right, and set it to polygons. And then we'll do a, a poly reduce. So poly reduce. Now you can also go and uh, reduce it but with the adaptivity. Just set this like 0.1. That'll at least make it a little bit better. You can see how it's all blended together now. It's, and these guys actually need to be fixed. They need to be the proper size too. So I'll fix that uh, in the, another video. Um, but for now, this works. I just wanted to show how I did the, uh, the low poly stuff. So then I just kind of pulled this down a lot. All right. We really just want kind of the general impression, you know, down 1% maybe. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Not too shabby, especially if you want, you know, like a dead tree. It's pretty good right there. All right. So with those two things settled, uh, we can merge these together now. Like so. And there we go. There you have it. And that's what I did. All right, and if we go back and uh, change the size of the sphere here, we get different looks. If 
probably a little too small. VDP is having a hard time getting it, but you can start to get the idea really quickly how you can start to really design your low poly trees. All right, with that, um, let's go and give these some color and I'll close out this video. And then the next video, what we'll do is we'll talk about, you know, creating those actual tree cards. So let's just give this like a brown. All right, and I'll set this to primitive, that's fine. There we go. And I'll just call this the uh, wood. And let's just copy it and paste it. All right. And this will be uh, foliage. Like so. Do something like that. There we go. And then let's set this to face area and then just pull it all the way down. And we now have low poly tree. All right. So in the next video, let's focus on creating the tree cards uh, for this particular system, um, because I, I do want to show like how you can actually take this uh, almost all the way to, you know, a real tree system by setting up the cards. You know, it's almost like, you know, how Unity does it inside of their tree creator and how like Speed Tree does it. Um, it's really powerful. So I'm not saying it's a replacement for, for those at all because um, those systems are definitely very powerful. But um, if you want to learn how to make your own tree systems, then this is very, very useful. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys there. And uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about tree cards. Thanks so much.